Angela Martinez, welcome to That's Clever. Artists have to keep an open mind because inspiration can come from anywhere. Like this crafter from Texas who doesn't throw away a thing. Find out what makes her eclectic artwork compute. <laughs> Welcome to Houston, Texas. I'm Sarah Wiley. I've always been a pack rat and I love collecting junk. I finally found a use for all the junk. I make cool art out of it. And today I'm gonna make this groovy metal flower. This is my workspace where I make all my art. I'm going to do to make my flower is select the middle and I'm going to use this great 18-wheeler hubcap which I get at truck stops on the interstate. I wonder why I always use these mirrors. I don't know. Must be something. The next thing I'm going to do is cut my petals out of metal flashing that I have on a roll and I'm going to put these gloves on so I don't cut myself. I like to do this freehand so that all the petals come out a little bit different, and that's what gives it character. Only eight more to go. I'm gonna clean this off a little bit, but I'm not gonna throw it away because I use everything. Thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill some holes in my petals so that I can attach them later to the hubcap. Last but not least, now the real fun begins because the petals are gonna start taking shape when I pound them. So I wanna get my hands on. So I better get these gloves off. Set like a glove. I do want to put safety glasses on to protect my beautiful eyes. So I'm going to use this round-tipped hammer, and I'm going to pound. And no matter what texture I make them, which I make them all different, I always go around the edges because I want to get rid of that sharp edge. Now that my petals are all textured and pounded, I just need to paint them pretty colors. But first, I have to prime them, and I don't need my glasses for that. Time to prime. I'm gonna put on some protective gloves and a nice face mask. And don't you know, the first thing you gotta do is shake it. Now that the primer coat is dry, I'm gonna paint the base coat. And I'm gonna choose some bright colors for that. I choose the base colors based on the embellishments I plan to use later. Now that the petals have dried overnight, it's time for my next layer. And I use this template that I made out of wax paper to cover the petal and paint the accent color. Since the petals are metal, I can use magnets to hold it in place, and it makes it nice and secure. I'm covering up some of the slight imperfections with my paint pen, but I really like the way it's turning out. So now the fun part really begins, because I'm going to decorate using the insides of computers. I even use the inside of computer keyboards to make petals out of. The next thing I'm gonna do is drill some holes in my petals so I can attach all my stuff to it. Now, I'm gonna take my little computer keyboard rubbers and screw them on. I could glue them on, but I really like the shiny little metal edge that this gives. I'm gonna leave this last one for my spacer so that my petal will look like it's 3D. Okay, my petals are all decorated. I used all kinds of keyboard parts. I used resistors, even an old turntable arm. 
And so now it's time to attach them to the main body, and that's the hubcap. I've drilled holes all the way around, and I'm gonna use the magic pillow to attach it. That way it won't get scratched. I've attached my last pedal, and that means I'm done. Isn't my groovy metal flower beautiful? I think so. Now check out how this metal artist makes his home state of Texas really shine. Hi, I'm metal sculptor William Boney from Houston, Texas. And today I'm gonna to be making my furnished Texas dream catcher. Welcome to my work area. The first step that I'll do is choose a piece of steel that I want to do the Texas Dreamcatcher on. I've projected up my artwork from a transparency. I'm going to go to drawing it. I've finished my drawing. I've set up my cutting table. Now I will don my safety equipment. I've got the glasses, cool shades protect my eyes while I'm cutting, and dirty gloves to protect my hands from the heat. This is my favorite part, the cutting. This is an oxyacetylene cutting torch. I have to keep it well maintained or it won't cut like butter. Now that I've finished cutting out the design, I'll cool it off. Now that I've got the main body cut out and set aside and cooling, I'm gonna cut out some feathers to give my Texas Dreamcatcher a Native American touch. One feather down, three to go. All four done. Now that the pieces are cooled, I've cut out this small relief star that will pop out of the design here on the main body to give it some splash. Splash, splash, splash. I'm gonna attach the small relief star to the big star on the main body by drilling a hole in the big star and tack welding a tiny screw on the relief star. Sometimes I attach it with chewing gum, but today I think I'll weld the screw on. Okay, now that that's done, I'll check the fit. Make sure it's gonna fit okay in there, look well. Uh, looks like we're in business. Next thing I'll do is tack weld the feathers on. I'm gonna bolt the small relief star on now. Back to a different hat for a different job. It feels better. I need to tighten this so when I hold it up to balance it and get the center of balance, the star won't be too whoppy jawed. Now that I've got the four feathers tack welded and the relief star bolted on, I'm ready to hold the piece up and find the center of balance. I'll go from there and weld hanger brackets on it. Back to changing the hats again. Once more a welder. That was a good one. These four feathers, I slightly tacked on the piece to find the balance. Now I'll take them off so I can polish each piece individually. Now I'm ready to grind and polish all the individual pieces. I'll do that with an electric hand grinder using a stone wheel first, and then I'll follow it up with a flat disc, which is 80 grit sandpaper for a smooth, slick finish. And earplugs, very loud. Now I take the torch, heat this up to where I get all the moisture out of the steel, so therefore I'll have to heat it from the bottom side, and then I'll work the heat to the top side That'll produce the color. I set my torch just like I would for cutting steel. No different. So here we go. Rock and roll. Very time consuming. I 
go to the top side with the heat and start the fun part, the coloring. I have to be careful not to overheat it in some areas because it discolors and I'll never regain that color back. You gotta start from square one with the grinding again, so very cautious. The hardest to gain and keep because it comes so quickly is the violet. The easiest is the gold. The blue is just kind of like a given. Now that it's done, I get to burnish the feathers. I get to burnish the star. I'll attach it all. We're almost done. I'm going to finish up complementing the piece by touching the torch tip to each point of the star within the ring, kind of simulating some rivets. I've put the four feathers on. I've bolted the relief star on. I've polyurethaned it with two coats of enamel. And I'm finally finished. Isn't it awesome? Texas Dreamcatcher. with Sarah in her Texas studio. She's ready to get rolling on another project. And this one's a bright idea. Lights, camera, action. Hi, I'm back, and I'm gonna make this film lamp out of old movie trailers and computer wire. The first thing I do is take an old lampshade, any size or shape will do, and I rip out the ring. I've cleaned and primed my lampshade ring, and the next thing I need to do is select the film. I've chosen landscapes as my theme, so I have all the appropriate film here, and now I just need to cut it into smaller sections that I'll mix with black, and that way it'll really pop. I'm gonna start by attaching the first row, and I'm gonna use all black. I use this nice computer wire, and I've chosen green, blue, and brown because they're sort of landscape colors. The first thing I do to start the first row is go through the hole and tie it off. Now that it's slightly secured, I can just sew it all the way around. This takes a while. Still sewing. Still sewing and sewing and sewing. And now I'm ready to start my second row. It's time to introduce the nice landscapes. The rest of the rows are easier because it's just a basic stitch. As long as the holes are lined up, everything will work out perfectly. Now I'll add a little black. Make sure it's all nice and trimmed. When I run out of wire, I just grab a new piece and weave it in. I'm gonna alternate black with the landscape, and I'm gonna do that for seven more rows. I'm on the third row, only four more to go. Finally, the last row, and I'm gonna finish it off with black. I got started making lamps out of film because I basically will make a lamp out of anything that looks cool with light showing through it. My last row of film is sewn on, and I've finished it off with wire all around the bottom. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of paper to diffuse the light going into the room. I'll make small holes and sew it in with wire in a few places. Now all I need is a lamp to put it on. And there you have it. How's that for a bright idea? You can find artists and crafters hard at work on great projects almost anywhere. You've just seen three. next time and see what America's crafting.